Evening everyone, we're going to try and get uh, Richard on today and we're going to talk about some composite Q&As because it went so well with uh, Stuart that um, we're going to want to get some more of it, aren't we? So Richard's going to go through some cases for us and uh, we've got uh, all of your questions that you've sent through over the last couple of weeks, we've got a ton, so that's going to be really good. I uh, hope everyone's doing doing well. We've got some awful weather here at the moment. Uh, we've got Richard on. Hopefully we get him joined in pretty quick. There we go. Get him joined in. There he is. Hey, hey. How you doing? Hey, man. How's it going? Yeah, good, thanks. You doing yeah, all right? good, yeah. Yeah, no, all good. Yeah, good. Managed to miss all the rain on the way. Managed to miss all the rain on the way home, so that was uh, that's the bonus. <laughs> now we've got a bunch here. It's a nightmare. It's just it's just blowing over now, but uh, it can't make up its mind at the moment, can it? <clears throat> it needs to improve for May. This is not this is not what we've come to expect from May. So yeah, no, it needs to uh, it needs to up its game. Uh, so cheers for coming on. Really excited about this, and uh, I know you enjoyed Stuart's one. So uh, you've got a big, yeah, uh, big act to follow there. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, big, big shoes to fill. So I'm ready. So, God, let's get cracking then, man. So, do you want to just give everyone a little intro about yourself? Because obviously, everyone here is a, a technician, so they don't do a composite anyway. So maybe. They... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I uh, I work in uh, in central London, <clears throat> and I've, I've been in London pretty much since I since I qualified. So I qualified in ninety nine uh, from from Birmingham. Did a, a year VT there um and then and then moved down and i was in uh sort of nhs and mixed practice for for a few years um stopped really enjoying that side of things um took a year off i went to uh, i worked as a dive guide in the red sea for a year but, um oh, no way. Com- com- yeah yeah something completely different and then came back and i knew i wanted to, i knew i wasn't enjoying what I was doing, but I wasn't quite sure what it was that I that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And quite by sort of luck and happenstance, I ended up. I got a recommendation to go on Chris Orr's one year aesthetic restorative course. So this was two thousand and five, uh, and didn't know much about it, but thought, yeah, that looked pretty good, and did that. And that really mass just massively changed my my practicing life uh, for for the better. Uh, really opened my eyes to to all sorts of new things. And and from there, I just got the the CPD bug really started doing lots, lots of, uh, lots of different courses. Um, I went and did all my uh, occlusion stuff over in the States at Dawson because that wasn't in the UK at that time. So I wanted a good mm-hmm. occlusion course. Um, and uh, yeah, all over Europe doing sort of uh, Vanini and Dietchi and all that sort of uh, composite stuff and, and just all over and just really sort of soaked it up, really enjoyed that, all, all of that sort of stuff. So lot, lots of little courses, became a member of the BACD. The BACD was a, was a huge thing as well. All their conferences were, were, were really great. Um, and that sort of pushed me into the direction that, 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 that I ended up going. So doing more and more um, sort of aesthetic restorative, more than just cosmetic dentistry. Um, I ended up going to Harley Street and worked there for a few years, um, but I've mainly been in the in the city now for uh, for about ten years. So I've worked in other places at the same time, but I've but I've been mainly in the city of London for for about ten years. So so that's where I'm at at the moment. Most of my work these days is aesthetic restorative or, or, or cosmetic dentistry. <clears throat> I'm very lucky that I get lots of referrals from from local dentists um, who send me either difficult cases or difficult patients. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the dentistry is easy but the patient's not and sometimes vice versa uh but that's great i'm very very fortunate to to, to have that so my my days tend to be seeing well, either referrals from other from other dentists or or self-referrals more and more self-referrals so uh it's a, it's a nice way to uh to spend the day so if the, if the majority of what you're doing then is cosmetic <coughs> stuff are you having you're having patients come specifically for sort of cosmetic consultations it's 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 a mixture. So sometimes yes, sometimes it's you know the the complaint is I'd like my smile to look better. Um, sometimes it's it's more functional and you know as as you know form follows function. It's people get a lot of wear cases. So again, mm-hmm. you know if that's sort of scary type wear that that dentists sometimes you know feel a bit nervous about embarking upon. So we'll see uh, we'll see those patients and obviously as you improve the function and fix the problems, the the aesthetics improve as well. Often these things sort of run um, kind of kind of hand in hand. Um, 
but yeah, some people it is just you know pure aesthetics. And <clears throat> sorry about getting tail end of a tail end of a cold. Um, uh, for some people, I, I mean, still you know almost still feel a bit embarrassed about saying that it's purely purely cosmetic. And it's like it's okay. Mm -hmm. That that you know that that's what I do. That's why you come to see me. But I'll say oh you know it's it's like I shouldn't really be bothered about it. But um, but for some people, yeah, it's like you know I want I want I want better looking teeth. I want a better looking smile. Um, but it, it, it's quite a range. It's quite it's quite a range. I don't. Um, most of my patients, um, probably between the ages of about thirty and fifty, I would say. Mm -hmm. So I don't get super young people, and uh, I don't do any. I don't get to do any of the stuff that you do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all my patients have a teeth, um, yeah. <laughs> which you know is, is is good and bad because it's it's uh, you get to sort of really sort of hone in on one particular thing, but it, it does sometimes uh, stop you from expanding other parts of your of, of your skill set. Mm -hmm. So I think the plan the plan for tonight is we we put out a load of sort of people asking questions and things like that. So we've collected a lot of questions and we've split it into sort of planning, actual execution and some workflows and then a bit about aftercare and stuff. So we're going to sort of run through those three topics. And if people have questions as we go along, please put them in comments or put them in the little Q&A section and we'll I'll, I'll fire them over to you. But um, so starting off, we're going to go into some planning stuff. So you know, what, what, what's a consultation looking like for you? If it is one of these cosmetic consultations, what are you looking at? You know, how does yeah. that kind of thing flow? So all of my consultations uh, for a new patient will be for an hour. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, um, and there may be lots of information from, from either the patient or, or the referring practitioner. So we try and get the guys on the phone to get as much information out of the, of the patient before they actually arrive. Um, and equally with, with referrals as well, you, you, you hope that there's, there's something more than please see this patient. Uh, but often, often, often there's not, and yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. But, um, so you don't always know what's, what you're going to be, what you're going to be seeing. So it'll be for an hour they'll come in and I'm just really sort of, it's just really open. It's just like, you know, nice to see you. What, what can I do for you today? Um, and it, and it really is that. And then just giving the patient space to, to talk really. Um, as I say, some people are a bit more shy about that. They want things to look, to look nicer. Um, some people are quite, quite happy and, you know, quite sort of direct and really, really know what they want. Um, and a lot of people don't know what they want. And that, that can be a problem sometimes is trying to really dial down what it is they're unhappy with and what it is they want. So I get them to talk for as much as they want to talk, but I, I don't spend too long really asking them too many questions about what it is that, that, that they want. Because the time that I really enjoy, and I think is the most useful for me, is the time that I spend in front of their pictures with them. So they'll, they'll, you know, it's a chat, it's in the chair, we'll have a look around and I'll do a full, you know, is it a cosmetic exam? Is it a regular exam? I, it, for me, it's, it's an exam is an examination. So we'll be looking at everything, you know, it'll be about function and looking at where, because again, a lot of these patients are being referred in or coming in because, you know, say for example, parafunctional wear, you know, made their teeth short or, um, you know they don't like the way things are looking so it's looking at the whole system and it's, you can't just look at the front teeth and go well we need to add length to those teeth when you know they're just going to smash everything to bits so you need to look at need to look at everything mm -hmm. so full examination just just as you would for, for any patient um and in fact to be honest every patient that comes in whether it's just um you know just just a new patient off the street or it's, if it's a referral for, for cosmetic stuff we'll, we'll we'll treat in the same way and they'll have the same set of photos so once we've done our examination um and any radiographs then there'll be photographs so in my room um there's a, kind of like a mini studio really there's a there's a chair we've got a couple of nice strobe lights so pop them in a the chair we'll do some full face views we'll do some smile views on those um and back in the chair for the rest of the clinical photos Mm -hmm. uh, we'll upload those onto the onto the screen, get them out of the chair, sit side by side, and I just literally look through their photos in chronological order, which is great because sometimes I think by detaching the patient from their their teeth and we're both looking at them on the screen, it's quite useful. They can start pointing out things that they don't like, and I can sort of perhaps suggest things that aren't so good. And you and through that process, you start to get an idea of what it is that's bothering the most and you can you, know, you can nail it down you know how do you feel about the color how do you feel about the shape um do you like this thing here and that that they really start to get into it so they're they're it's, you know the co-discovery thing you're, you're you're going through it together mm -hmm. you're um really just finding out what what it is that they that they don't like um and 
sometimes you know they've been referred in for say <clears throat> i see a lot of post ortho patients for for bonding or black triangles and the referral might say you know patient doesn't like black triangle between upper central incisors and then but when you take the photos and you take the smile shots from the side and they start going well i don't like that one either that one either that one you know so mm -hmm. it's really important for them to 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 really look and, and examine it with you so that's nice because they get to really have a look and have a real deep dive into how their mouth looks and obviously they need the clues of views and perhaps they might not like those you know metal fillings the back of the mouth whatever it might be but usually by the time you get to looking through all those photos just as i say just go through in chronological order you've pretty much nailed everything hopefully that they that they like or, or don't like and hopefully got a feel for where the expectations are as well because it's you know as much of it as for me as finding out what the clinical issues is it's also finding out what the patient's like and where where they're at and and can i meet those expectations mm -hmm. um you know for, for most people are fine but you always sort of just you know you, you're just trying to you know, just be quite circumspect and just have a, uh, you know, is this person somebody who perhaps a bit of whitening and bonding and that's what they want to do and that's, and that's fine. Or is this person really want a perfect smile, um, which I'm not going to be able to satisfy with freehand bonding or I'm not, you know, and, and it's, it's trying to sort of get those levels and kind of, you just kind of sort of working each other out really and, and just trying to find out what it is they want. And the so that hopefully you can, um, you know, suggest the most appropriate treatment plan. So, so that that's very much. I don't tend to go into um, the very specifics of the treatment plan. So mm -hmm. I'll sort of be broad brush strokes. I might say, right, okay, I think we need to do a little bit of alignment in the misaligned. Talk a little bit about that. We'll do some whitening. We'll do composite bonding, even whatever it might be. Um, but I don't get then into how much things cost um or how long certain appointments will be that will all be for my treatment coordinators to to go through Fine. so i like to i find an hour quite tight sometimes anyway and some it's rare i bring them back but sometimes i will bring them back but um at that stage it'll be right up to the treatment coordinator and they'll go through things with them they'll go through fees um treatment plans sometimes you know don't feel rushed that you have to get a treatment plan sorted and done and out for the time they leave you don't i mean yeah just say look we'll get yeah, that email, yeah. email to you this week um you know and we'll follow up from there and um you have a read through if you have any questions you can come back in we can have a chat if you're not you're happy the guys can schedule you in and we can go from there and that that mm -hmm. tends to work for me people have got different ways of doing it but that, that tends to be how it works for me yeah. so you don't get the tco doing photos beforehand or anything like that you like to have your own photos i'm too anal about, them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> about, yeah, yeah. About, about my photographs and yeah you know, people take great photos but i i like to take my own photo and to be honest i i learn quite a lot from taking the photos i'll see things when i take the photo perhaps you know how the lights dynamic, work yeah. yeah or dynamically yeah. how their how their lips you know working mm -hmm. or what sort of smile they do and i think again it's it's a way to build that that relationship and that bond so i i personally quite like taking i know you know it's Again, in the states, you know, they have all the radiographs taken and the you know algin is mm. done and the you know photographs done. And, but but for me, I, I I do quite like taking my own photographs. Perfect. I mean, that sounds yeah, that sounds pretty pretty comprehensive at all there. So now, when you're looking at you've got these cases in, how are you visualizing what you're going to do? So one of the questions that someone asked was, you know, are you always looking to just add some lengths so you can use translucencies or you can mm. use tints? Now, Stuart was very much in his. He said, I, I do that on the day. I decide what I'm going to do when I'm in there. Are you looking at that beforehand or are you, you know, pre-planning um, it or are you going with <clears> the flow in like that as well? I think, I think I have in my mind's eye sort of where I think the issues are. So, you know, some of them are very obvious sometimes where it's, you know, perhaps they've got a, a reverse smile line or just very short teeth. You know, those patients we're going to be adding length to. Mm -hmm. um, and probably most of the time, there is going to be some form of volume change. You know, people have, you know, that, that, who don't like their teeth, it's, it's rare that their teeth are actually just perfectly shaped and in the right place. And, and it's just, you know, then I'm going to put some composite on them. So usually I am adding length. 
Um, but I had one the other day, and one of the teeth that we were that we were bonding to, uh, we weren't adding length to. And for those people, yeah, you, you've you've got to use tint because you're not going to get any incisor translucency anyhow. So very rare, actually. And I, I guess that that tells you something that I pulled out the the blue tint. Um, actually, it's, <laughs> it's it's a flowable that's in blue, and I, and I I actually checked the expiration date on it. I think my nose is very good. <laughs> my, my nurse is very good, and like would never have anything that's past its expiration date. I might add, but I couldn't remember the last time I'd used it. Um, so yeah most of the time the vast majority of the time these people are going to have length added um mm -hmm. so and and then obviously it's much easier to gain your incisor translucency however however you want to do it so i tend to look at a case and you know um part of the photos i'll be taking will be photos in repose with sort of you know mouth slightly open seeing how much tooth structure um and of course if i'm getting uh, a wax up done then i'll need to be communicating with with my technician how much mm -hmm. um how much i'm going to be adding on to the teeth so i've got should have some idea um of, of how much volume you're going to be adding so with the photo this is why i find it much easier to look at a photo and sort of diagnose aesthetically from a from, from a photograph i for me it's just you can see you know it's flat nothing's moving you can perhaps see something's it's easier to see if something's canted you know if the midline's canted um just levels I, I just find it very, so in that you know there and then it's it, it's it becomes quite quick and simple to sort of in your mind's eye have a broad idea of how you're going to do it i do say yeah sometimes you know my nurse asks me how are we going to do this case the patient coming in and i go well we'll just see so it just sometimes it's you know it just depends on what's going on at the time is that as to how exactly you're going to do it you've got you've got usually a broad idea of what's what's going to happen mm -hmm. so you've mentioned there wax ups are you using wax as often is that you know, are you using te like technician, is it, or is it, you know, sort of old school style? Is it digital? Are you using DSD, direct markets? We, yeah, we Bit of everything. Are, no, we are properly analog. <laughs> it's, yeah, we haven't, we haven't yet made the, uh, the move to digital for, 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 for lots of reasons. But, um, yeah, so I will take an impression and send it to the mm -hmm. lab. And if I'm trying to communicate levels, it'll be like a, um, a stick bite, so they can, you know, with the photographs, so they know what's uh, what's level, what's not. And I and I'll get it waxed up by by my lab. So I've, you know, I worked with my uh, my technician for you know the last 12, 13 years, so sort of exclusively. So he, you know, does beautiful, beautiful wax ups. Will I get it? I'll get a wax up if I'm doing multiple units usually. So this is a we've got a Q and A from. I'm see if it might come on. Oh, it does come on the screen from Kunal Desai saying, "When do you decide you're going to do a wax up and not freehand? Not freehand. Is there a certain parameter? How? Yeah, whether you've had your Weetabix or not in the morning. How brave? <laughs> how brave you're feeling? Um, I if it's multiple units of teeth. So <clears throat> if if I feel that the case would benefit it, if it's going to be swifter, if it's going to just make my life easier and give me just an easier endpoint, then I will get a wax up done. Um, so if, for example, I'm treating, say, the front four or the front six teeth, um, and there's going to be some volume change, going to be lengthening teeth, um, I'll usually get a wax up done, um, mm -hmm. just because it, it, it's just quicker for me. Um, if it's, you know, if I'm just doing two laterals, for example, um, I feel I've got landmarks there. So, uh, you know, with the centrals and the canines and I'm, and I'll have, while I'm working on the patient, I'll have their, usually their full face photo on my, on my screen. So I can sort of refer to that as to where I want to be building things to approximately. Um, but if I don't have any landmarks, um, you know, it's a classic, you know, you're, you're, you know, I mean, we treat patients in a ridiculous position. We're upside down, off to the side, and you hope you're hoping, you know, you, you hope you don't sit them up and things are kind of canted. And um, but they are sometimes, and you, you know, I'll, I will now get to to a point before I've sort of gone too far with the patient. I will be sitting them up, and I will be having a look at them, or even taking a full face photo before yeah. I'm going in to do final polishing, whatever it might be, just to make sure because it's you don't want to have finished in inverted commas and for, for things not 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 to be straight. And the wax up will give you. Uh, that security that you know that things are, in, are are in the right place. But yeah, if it's if it's one or two teeth, it's usually I'm going to freehand it. If it's several teeth, um, then I'm I'm, I'm probably going to get a wax up. And is that just from a planning point of view for like mock up or execution? Are you ever doing just a mock up and then you know sort of recording palatally or anything like that? Um, sometimes I I am um, if. So a couple of cases recently where we're doing, say, a central and a lateral, 
and there's composite there and it's okay but it's just perhaps a bit short or the shape isn't quite right well i'll try and just add a little bit in flowable first of all take a little plate or stent to that just again because it's going to make things a bit easier if you're yep. almost there if it's way off um mm -hmm. then i'm not i'm just gonna i'm just gonna start again um but um and again probably one of the other cases i should say is if if i've got a case where the patient's got uh, lots of incisal translucency so lots and lots of detail and if you're going to spend the time putting that into the incisal edge and then that incisal edge isn't in the right place and you're going to you know, remove all your all your pretty work you know that's that's a bit self-destroying so if if i if i you know one of those and i'll i will you know, definitely have a platal stent either from a wax up or something that I've done. So, um, yeah, yeah. Perfect. The next question um, is about a little bit about planning, I guess, uh, about very white teeth that came in today. So pop it up. Mm. Um, so how do you make sure patients with very bright or very white teeth <clears throat> are ready to get a natural look? So, you know, there's that bonding look and i think mm. you've, you've you've said before that you know people come to you because they want natural looking so how how do you achieve that what's the, the yeah skill I, mean, in that? I i i mean I, I quite like patients who whiten before they have bonding uh because it makes it easier usually generally you know whiter whiter teeth are slightly more opaque and there's less you know there's there's, there's, there's you know it's easier to um, um to to uh, to make it all blend in um it's never one thing, I don't think, when you're trying to make a tooth look real, particularly very white tooth. A couple of things that make it not look right, um, I think it is when they're very opaque. Um, so the opacity from, you know, cervical margin down to the size of the edge, one shade with no real translucency, no depth. So they just look very flat. So uh, you can still be very white and have translucency. You know, you can still have really nice value, really bright value in the middle. Um, and if you've got a nice uh, incisal halo, it's nice and bright at the halo, you can get your um, translucency in um, and it will, you'll, the tooth will have, just have more depth um, and will just you know, look better. Um, texture is another one. So having appropriate texture. So not, you know, nature isn't straight. So not having, you know, dead straight like two straight lines on the on the on the teeth ideally if you can break the light up you, what you're trying to really do is just play with the light so the mm -hmm. you know again with the opacity you'll try not to reflect all of that light you want the tooth to absorb some of it you want with the texture you want to try and put uh, appropriate texture in but again that that will break some of the light up so you don't want big um areas of specular reflection where sort of you know the light hits and it just bounces off a big flat surface if you can put a texture in that will will break that up and make it look sort of more, more dappled and more sort of you know um let's say sort of ni nice specular reflection that will work really well an appropriate polish so different to texture if it's they need to be shiny you know teeth are, teeth, teeth are shiny and sometimes you just see them and they're, they're just very flat and and, and, and dull looking so um, a lot of it is about choice of, of resin, so the composite mm -hmm. that you're using. <clears throat> and I certainly, there's some composites, I think, that do lend themselves to really, really nice natural. This probably leads on to what composite do you use. But um, there's... Uh, that there, is there's, the next there's, question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, uh, there's some composites that just that make you look good, I think. Um, they can be a bit harder to use, but the results, I think, are really, really good. Um, but yeah, ha having having appropriate finishing. So for me, a uh, composite that I've used for years that I really, really like is uh, HRI from Myterium. So they used to be HFO, but the HRI, um, that, and I don't use the whole system. I will probably use two of their um, of their composites. They, they do, um, uh, dentine shades and they do and they do three values of enamel so they do a very bright one which is called universe enamel three i use that an awful lot um that's a really 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 nice composite to use on bleached teeth because it's bright uh it's opacious enough that you don't have to put something underneath it which is a bit of a cheat mm -hmm. uh which is nice <laughs> because as soon as you know one of the problems with a lot of the enamels is that they're you know you want them to be translucent but they're so translucent you can't just stick them on the end of a tooth because you're going to see where the tooth ends and where your where your enamel starts whereas hri the ue3 universal enamel 3 is it's the highest value enamel it's the reason it's called hri is it's high refractive index um so it's got a, it treats light very similarly to enamel so you almost mm -hmm. get that that bluish opalescence from it just just naturally um but as i say 
um, opaque enough that actually it will hide some some stuff as well, but it has, still has that depth. It will still be slightly translucent. So I use that um, a lot, um, particularly for edge bonding, or um, and that works really nice, and say on on, on bleach teeth. So um, the one down from that, which is slightly more translucent, Universal Enamel Two, I'll, I'll use that. So I, I as well, but I do like the HRI enamels. They're 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 fantastic. Um, if I'm going to use I mean, there's usually, this is pretty, I can probably break this down into sort of four, uh, four things really. So I've got my enamels, there's, and then obviously I'm going to use those, I'm going to probably use a dentine underneath them quite often. I could use the HRI dentines, or I could use the, um, I use the Myris dentines quite a lot as well. So just quite um, uh, colourful, quite chromatic, um, you know, opaque um, dentine, and that's great. That, that works really, really nicely. I have sort of some universal ones, you know, just A1, B1, you know, that you just sometimes you want to put somewhere on the tooth. And then I use uh, flow balls as well. So I'm, I'm a big fan of flow ball composite. And I use flow balls a lot for interproximal areas and black triangles, um, injection molding. So I use, I use flow balls as well. So flow ball, uh, one of my favorite flow balls is Premise. Uh, I think that's from Kerr. Um, a lot of flow balls are two translucents so if you want mm -hmm. to use them sort of as a, as a restorative sort of on, on their own and if you're trying to as I say do something like maybe a black triangle with with uh, flowable um, sometimes they'll, they'll just they're just too gray they just let too much light pass whereas the premise has got quite a lot of opacity it'll bounce a lot of that light back and it will just blend in really really nicely so broadly that that's kind of you know from doing yeah anything with enamel wise is going to be the HRI the body stuff, the dentine stuff tends to be the Myra stuff, a few random ones around and, and some flowable as well, roughly speaking. <laughs> but I mean, it just, it's, it's good to have a range because what I always do is try, try, try stuff on the tooth, you know, because everybody's slightly different. But I do find yeah. there's not many, there's not many things you can't do with a bit of HRI and a dentine shade, like two, two, two shades of composite. You can do most things with that. Those are the, those are the go to. Those are the go to. Yeah, yeah. So, like, let's let's jump into execution. And I think the main thing people wanted to know was um, sort of strips and you know interproximal strips and those kind of things. And we got some some cases on this. So the main thing people were asking was sort of mylar, bio, PTFBs. Mm. What are you using? Yeah. Do you use so, everything? Do you use specifically one thing? So, sometimes, to the annoyance of my of my nurse, yeah, I use everything, which is, is getting everything. Out. <laughs> um, but um, my my main go to for for interproximal stuff is is probably the the BioClear, the, the Clark matrices. Um, do you want to see a case with that now? Is that? Oh of... yeah. Oh, we all want to oh, see yeah. some cases. Oh yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, hang on. Let me uh, let me just turn you around. So let's see if I can not make this too. Uh, let's move this back a little bit. Okay. Right. So the Clark Matrix or the uh, the BioClear, they come in a huge box like this. Um, all these little sort of boxes of different ones. I have this. And I've not used 99% of this kit, I'll tell you now, okay? So it's sitting there. I think it was probably quite expensive. It doesn't do, is it the, I use the two that, that I that I use. So if you want to buy, and you can buy them as individual refills, which is what we do. So the, uh, can you see that okay? Is that coming? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So there's the A103, which is a small incisor. <clears throat> so I use this most of the time this is sort of my go-to interproximal sort of clear matrix um and then if there's a big space i use the the dc203 which is a diastema closure one so this has got quite you can see a, quite a big curve so if you've got your diastema um and sometimes this this is too big this this space that it jumps is, is too big and then it can sort of bend and buckle so what you can do actually is you can take a, a pair of scissors and you can just trim this back to whatever height you want that will give you the right sort of emergence profile for the so you try it in and you see whether it fits in snugly or whether it's as i say sort of you know distorting because it just can't fit in and then you can always sort of trim trim the bottom but but most of the time uh, you can see here this is a much more sort of shallow one this is this is what i use so I'll show you a case because I, I use this a lot. I use it for black triangles. Um, I use it for interproximal areas of class fours, that sort of thing. But if I just show you how, how I use it. So um, this patient, big black triangles, you know, really sort of narrow neck of a tooth. And they, they, they want to get rid of those. So 
in a case like this, if I'm going to be, you know, the, the difficulty is with these, I, I can't use a, a mylar, a, a clear, you know, sort of single um, mm -hmm. straight strip for this, you know, you, and I, and it's difficult to, um, to adjust it afterwards. So I, I really, really like them for this. So what I'll do is I'll put the, the rubber dam on, uh, obviously nice thing about rubber dam is you only get good retraction of tissues and good exposure of, of, of these areas. So I want to get these really super clean. So if there's any, you know, calculus or so you're going to get the scalar in there and I'll sandblast these areas as well um, to get it all sort of super, super clean and nice. Um, and then I'm going to be adding composite to this part of the tooth, this part of the tooth, this part of the tooth, and this part of the tooth. So plate of view. So again, it's really nice and clean, really, really good access. And then I'll try my um my clark matrices in <clears throat> and i think this is this is an old case now but i think this was just the normal uh, the normal shape this isn't a diastema closure you don't need to wedge it or anything like that you know you've actually got contact here and here so it's going to stabilize the the matrix really really nicely and it just tucks in really nicely. And you're just checking that it's not you know it's not buckling it's just got a nice nice smooth emergence profile you don't have to tuck it right under the dam because you know this dam has pushed the tissues up. When you take this dam off, the tissues are going to relax and come back again. So you can leave a little space; it's fine. But I'm just checking that it that it fits nicely. <clears throat> and from the palatal as well, I can see you just get nice, nice emergence profile. It's going to be nice, nice and clean. So let's go back. I can then either take these out and just etch and bond. Uh, or sometimes I will actually, depending on what's going on, leave these in and actually etch underneath these, wash it all out, bond, um, air dry, and then and then go straight straight to composite. So there's there's loads of different ways of doing it, however you want to do it. But at this point, obviously, I've etched and bonded, <clears throat> and I will etch all the way down to here because what I've done here. So this is the this is the the premise, and the vast majority of time, I'm going to use B1 premise. It it has a nice chameleon effect. It will blend into most um, most teeth as long as they're obviously not really really dark. Um, but it will um, it, it works really nicely. So B1 or A1, those are the only two shades I've ever used. <laughs> premise, yeah, dark teeth A1, quite, uh, light light teeth B1. <laughs> um, and what you do is this, as I say, stabilize really nicely because of the contact between the teeth. So this just opens up like a little trap door and you, you put it in and you just, you just fill it up and you fill it up from the front. And I want the composite to go all the way past the contact point. And on this side too, fill it all up. You can see my composite sort of finishes about, about here. If you finish here somewhere, try and get it perfect. There's always a little ledge or something. So I found it's just much better just to carry it on, carry it on across and then cure and then go on and do the other teeth as well so you can see so this is unfinished obviously so we've got a big flash here and here there's a flash of excess here and here but what's really nice about this is that i need to just remove the flash around these parts here and here but i don't want to touch anything here and i don't want to touch anything here because this is my you know beautifully smooth uh composite against um you know, against the, the acetate. And it's, it's just, you know, if I start messing with this, it's just going to ruin things. So um, I will use either soft flex disc or a fine diamond. Um, I just run this slowly just to remove this excess here. And then some enhance um, discs or, or points just, just to finish that off there. If I feel like I've got a bit of a, I've got a bit of um, an edge here, then I will use a scalpel just to go in, just, just to remove the edge here. But I don't really want to be touching any, any of these pieces because then it's quite swift uh, on the back as well. You can see, so yeah, so the excess just comes around here and comes around here, comes around here and then comes around here. So I will take a, a rugby ball, um, um, diamond and just again just remove the these sort of parts here sort of the gross any gross flash um, and then again just take some some pre-polishing points just just to remove the rest of it but it's just really neat and really really nice so then once you've once you've done that um, it just you know th this is just really nice and smooth and it's really cleansable um, flossable there's not going to be any any edges and you haven't had to work very much at all here. You've just had to remove and just blend in that little bit. And as I say, and that B1 premise is really nice because um, some of them will be too gray and you're just, uh, or too translucent. And you'll get this gray effect. Uh, whereas the, the, the premise, um, it, it reflects much more light and keeps things really nice and nice and bright. Um, 
and then a little bit of polishing. Yeah, yeah. So then we just go. So again, we, we fill things in and it, it just, yeah. So you know, if a patient comes in with one, you know, it's, it's not a one tooth problem. That's the other thing worth saying to the patients is, you know, this, mm -hmm. is, a, this, is, a, this is a three tooth problem. Um, you know, there's two back triangles and if for me, each back triangle is going to be treating, be treating two teeth. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning to patients, which I've, I've had a, before, is that the tooth form is going to change. So obviously, this is a very exaggerated, you know, very, very thin, thin neck tooth. But if they've got black triangles, that they're going to go and have a square tooth form. You know, and if it's a front tooth, it's like, you know, we're going to fill this in. And I always say to patients that your contact point is going to move from here. And we're going to have to move it up. It's all about moving your contact point from here up to here. And if we do that, that's fine. We're going to fill in with tooth, but it's going to change the shape of the tooth. Tooth is going to look square. Are you happy with that? Because from experience, occasionally they're not. Um, they just mm -hmm. need to be aware that that, um, um, that, that the shape of the tooth is, is going to change. So I use uh, the BioClear or the Clark Matrix a lot for my for my interproximal um, um, area. So again, you know, I won't get so much detail with here, but this is... Um, um, a small lateral that's got this sort of concavity on the um, on, on the mesial so i'm going to be adding volume to this too and again on the mesial and distal isolation sandblast so mesial here exactly the same thing uh, we're going to inject the um the premise that gives a beautiful emergence profile we'll be the same on the distal as well um, and then I can just go in and add. The nice thing about the premise B1 is it blends in perfectly with the one I was saying earlier, the enamel UE3 from the HRI set. So they just, you know, you can just work together. So, so we've got B1 here, we B1 on the back, um, and then this is a bit of um, enamel, and it just all blends in really, really nicely. Um, so that's how I, you know, that's how I work all of my interproximals usually. Some people will do. Um, you know, the pull technique, um, lots of the mm -hmm. different ways of doing it. I just can't really get that to work very well for me. And I don't know whether it's just because of the composites that I use. HRI is uh, is fairly unforgiving. Um, it, 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 it's not. So let me take it around again for a second. It's, um, there we go. The HRI is, um, it looks beautiful and it polishes really, really nicely. But you have to have it heated. Um, and even then, it's, it's a fairly... It's stiff material that you can't push around. It doesn't flow particularly well. So I, for me, the way that I get my interproximal areas is, is, is by using the, um, it's by using those. Um, just while I've got you, I'm just going to turn you back around again. Um, so this is a case that we posted a while ago on, um, um, on Instagram, but it was, we were just replacing a veneer on this, on this tooth here, but I just wanted to show because I will always use this, this technique for, for the interproximal area. So we've, we've added, show you we've added a little bit to the end of the tooth but the interproximal areas here have been completed again using um the matrix system there um and that gives a nice again you get that nice nice emergence profile but it's it's it just it creates the frame for me um and that that works really well let's turn you back around i mean we've got everyone's very very happy with that alan the cornish dentist is an amazing result We've got uh, we've got some some kiwis in the house as well. So uh, hey Tony, <laughs> um, the next up, and I, well, I could see it already. Uh, everyone wanted to know about your class fours, um, and the main thing they said there was free hands or wax ups. And we sort of covered that earlier. Mm. Um, so that, that that's yeah more class four workflow. Are you then are you doing these? You know, are you doing a shell and then getting these interproximals in and then building up? Or yeah. So again, there's, there's there's loads of different ways doing it, but I think the simplest and easy. If you can get your palatal shell on, if you're missing um, if you're missing tooth structure, um, again, it, it varies so much from case to case. But I'll either get my palatal shell and then build up. I'll probably put my interproximals in last actually with those just because um, I can leave it. It doesn't have to be perfect along the, um, you know, kind of along the, uh, the transition line angles and I can have it make it as thick as I want to and then put those Clark matrix around and they'll, they'll grip quite nicely all the way down the tooth and not just fill in any voids and then I can cut mm -hmm. back as much as I want to. Whereas if I go platelet shell, Again, it depends on how many teeth you're treating. Um, but if you go platelet shell and then do the Clark matrix uh, uh, matrices, sometimes it might not 
um, give you the thickness that you want. But you can do it either way. So I literally did a, a, a composite veneer case this week where I did it the first way. Um, and actually the class four that I'll show you in a second, I did it the other way. So the, the nice thing is, is you can play around with it and you can, um, you know, you can see, see what works for you. Um, and you can always cut back. You know, people worry that they will add the, uh, the interproximal area and oh, there's, there's too much resin there. What am I going to do? It's like, you cut it back, you know, take, take your bird to it. Ideally, you know, a, um, a speed increasing hand piece. So there's not loads of compressed air going everywhere and oil, but um, you can cut it back. You put a little bit of bond over it and you can just go again. So it's fine if you put an excess or the flash is too big, you can just neaten it all up. It, it, it works really, really well. Um, I hope you're, look, uh, you're looking at the comments because I'm not getting, actually. You're, no, you're, 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 getting, you're getting called a boss a lot from uh, oh, good, lot, good. A, lot, a lot of bosses. So Min Minesh thinks you're a boss. Imi thinks Excellent. you're a boss. Excellent. So all good. Clearly, go. Good. Let's jump into that class four case. Everyone wants right. to see okay. that. Okay. 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 Let's let's uh, let's turn you around again. So this is one just just from your class four case. Yeah. This is this is a standard standard class four case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what gave you the hint? Right. So standard class four case. Um, so this is because it's one from from the other day. So it was on the um, uh, on the SD card. So um, so this is small composite here, small composite here. Um, it's not very nice. Um, and again, just I mean, the importance of, of reflect, uh, reflective line angles. You know, this is what makes the tooth look nice when they wander in and out. I mean, there's lots of things you can say about this. But wandering in and out, not 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 so good. So standard class four. So for this particular case rubber dam now i think when i posted this i actually said that i used the mylar strip but i think again <laughs> remembering back now i i took a little putty stent um of of this i think i've added some flowable just to make the shape slightly slightly better um and then taken a little putty stent which sometimes i do putty or what you can do is when the rubber dam's on is just use a bit of um bite registration material Mm -hmm. just on the back and it's that's quite nice because it's really stiff and hard and just you know just locks into place and it's that I, I use that quite a lot as well so you know futile d or doric bite or something like that you can just just use it so and it's a little blob across a couple of teeth you don't need to have a whole big putty stand that you have to you have to trim back um so take off all the old all the old stuff so it comes down to about here so i've done a, a little bit of a bevel here which just sort of wanders around like this and again here, um, I don't do massive bevels usually. I don't. I don't want to cover the whole the whole tooth. But with this, um, the old composite went up to here. So yeah, we just sort of made it made it as neat as neat as we could. And I'll usually polish this. So again, enhance uh, polishing points or discs or soft flex fine discs, whatever you want to do. But just not to you know leave any um, any rough edges, anything like that. Occlusally. Again, just neat, nice and neat, um, all the dam sort of tucked in. Um, you know, I, I, I love dam. Uh, you know, people are sort of really evangelical about it. But for me, it just makes my life easier. Um, I mean, obviously, it's good for the tooth as well and, uh, you know, good for moisture control. But it's just, it just makes life easier, you know. Um, right, so palatal stem. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either do it with just regular paste composite or you can do it with flowable. People go, <laughs> don't do it with flowable, it'll break. Um, it doesn't break, it's fine. The teeth, the teeth will be fine. Your, co your composite isn't going to wear out faster, it's okay. Um, you know, maybe not somebody is doing massive power function on, on, on the back of teeth, but this is, you know, this is a trauma case, it's fine. So you could use uh, premise if you wanted to, or you could use, you know, more heavily filled, uh, like the genial flow, something like that, if that, mm -hmm. if that makes your life, life a little bit easier. And again, it doesn't have to be, it's not a perfect. You know, you're just trying to get, I'm trying to get the length on it. Um, you know, ideally it would go up to there, but I'm not too worried about that because we're going to fill those bits in. So you're just trying to get sort of the, um, the main um, uh, platelet part onto, onto the two. Right, so interproximal area. So this is where I've used, again, the, um, uh, the Clark matrices. Mm -hmm. So you can see, so uh, this is, again, B1, because that's what I pretty much always use. So we've added here, we've added here. Now, I would not have got it that neat straight away that's been cut back and had new bond be applied to it so when you see these ones and you go oh my god how did they get their um you know their interproximal area so you know perfect off i mean some people do better than me but for me i have to i have to cut it back you know if i've got a big flash or a big excess or it's just a bit a bit you know not, not as neat as i want it to be just take a bird gently and just smooth it back um 
added some bonding resin and you, you're good to go again. So then you've got your nice frame. And as I say, it's just, it's a nice, it's a nice shape to build them. So that's, that's how I'll do usually um, the frame of the class four. Um, I'll add some more opacious stuff. So this is, this is some dentine. This will be uh, one of the Myris dentines. Um, always looks worrying at this stage because your teeth are dehydrated. Hopefully you've chosen your, um, uh, you know, your dentine before this point. Um, but you, you know, you're putting it on and it's always going to look more chromatic and richer. And you just, uh, you know, one thing I'd say is just learn, learn, it doesn't really matter which composite system you use. People get really hung up on which, which composite is, is the best one. You know, people were doing beautiful composites years ago before, you know, look at some of the stuff that DHE was doing, you know, 20 plus years ago. You, 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 it's about how you use it. So just pick a system, learn how to use it and do that mm -hmm. and get good at it. And yes, you can throw in other stuff and, you know, whatever, but, but just, just learn a system um, and, and, and practice it and get good at it. Um, and that will, uh, and that will really, really help. Um, so uh, again, straight lines don't really exist in nature. So if I'm going to put a dentine body in it, I'm going to sort of break it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you're just trying to sort of break up the light um, just make things disappear a little bit. So um, something um, a little bit like that. I've just put the shot in from the side just because you want to make sure that you've got enough space for your last overlying layer of, mm -hmm. uh, of enamel. So one of the things that, that when you first start doing these, you can either get really panicky and leave far too much space for your enamel. Um, and a lot of enamel, that will just make the, uh, the restoration gray out quite a lot because you've got your enamel's too thick and it will just, you know, it's not very good. Or you build it out too much and, the, and there's not enough space. So you've really got to move your head around like left and right and actually look from these angles and see how much space that you've got left to, um, to, to, to put the enamel in. I know I sort of jumped, <laughs> I hadn't taken a picture. So what I'll do normally here, if, I've, if I'm ready to go, I will put a single piece of um, um, HRI uh, enamel over the top of all of this. And I will put it and I will try not to manipulate it too much. And by that, I mean, I'm not gonna get a flat plastic and start tapping away at it. I'm trying to avoid prostitutes. You're always going to get prostitutes. Everybody gets prostitutes. But if you start pushing and pulling and prodding, particularly with HRI, which is pretty unforgiving, you will end up with, with, with a lot of prostitutes. So I try and put a piece on and either use a nice, mm -hmm. clean gloved finger and sort of push it in or something like the Optra Sculpt. That's quite nice as well, just for yeah. sort of manipulating it over. So you've got quite a, quite a mass. Try not to go beyond the end, you know, sort of just, just get it as, it as reasonably neat, but I'm not trying to get the final anatomy in my last layer of composite. I am for posteriors, you know, I don't do as little, you know, uh, just as possible, but for anteriors, I want to just, um, I will do all of that with burrs. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'll go through the true sort of polishing, polishing protocol. Um, but what I will do is I will, um, once the, the composite's on, um, and I can go through this in a minute if you want to, if you've got time, is, is um, you know, you're working your line angles, you're trying to get it to, um, to basically look like the tooth next door and get it nicely polished. But it's just one piece of, of composite, one piece of enamel over the whole of the front mm -hmm. of the thing. And then usually I'll go sequentially through discs. I'll go soft flex discs, I'll go you know, reds and then through there. Um, I will use uh, fine diamonds in a speed increasing handpiece. I will draw on these teeth um mm. in fact right okay what well, seeing as you're here right so <laughs> so soft flex disc soft flex i use tons of these tons and tons and tons and tons, tons. they're great i really really enjoy red soft flex discs and i also use bucket loads of these so these are enhanced pre-polishers mm -hmm. um particularly the disc in fact all of them but but the disc for, for a lot of it for the for the shaping and then sort of more of the anatomy i'll go i'll go with these ones but this is what's going to give me most of my of my shaping and my my anatomy um mm -hmm. this will remove composite um and it's and, it, and, and they're brilliant um they won't polish teeth but they will remove composite and they'll they'll, they'll work really really well for final luster and gloss i use Optripol. um and with that you have to work it quite a lot um so you need to make sure that you're you know not cooking the teeth you want a bit of suction there just to just to keep it keep it cool um but that will give you a really really high gloss so all all the cases of mine that you see that will go out you know, it's really shiny it's optropol that, that i'll use to um to to, to to polish it with and it works really really well so i'm trying to get to this point where i've got this nice almost like a blank canvas i've sort of you know it's the right length 
Um, I'll have used Softlex discs here to get to get this correct here. If I've done a what's much class four, but say a composite veneer, um, I'll use the uh, the fine diamond in a speed increasing handpiece just to try and get the cervical um, as nice as possible. And then you really want to get these line ang line angles are probably the most important thing I think. You know, the line angles what make what make the restoration look right or or not right. So if you can draw on where you want them to be and really pay attention to the distance between where the teeth meet and where the line and where this transitional line angle starts and try and have that the same distance on both and at the same angle if you want one going up here and one going across here it's never going to look right so you want to try and get those right and you can either use disc to sort of disc away this side and then this side or you can use um, the speed increasing handpiece to um, sort of work that area um, as well but you really want the reflective light angle to be bang on and not to wander in and out as well you want it nice and crisp and nice and sharp um, so again i'll use the uh, object um, enhanced points to really sort of trough out areas but that's going to give you a very straight flat not very organic line and, and as i say the you know, teeth break up the light so after i've used that i'll often use a um the diamond the um uh, fine diamond in a speed increasing handpiece again just to um, trying to break this up as much as possible and by using this at a different angle and sort of pressing it at a different angle you'll take these ridges and you'll start flattening them and softening them and then the other top tip for this is i for a lot of the when you see a lot of this sort of anatomy that i do it's either a greenstone uh, running a slow handpiece uh, running, sorry running a speed increasing handpiece or a regular rose head you know care is removal burr they they are brilliant for giving you nice uh nice anatomy because you can use this let's go back one to just it just kind of nibble it nibbles away at the tooth and it will just sort of break up the break up the light so that's um again so you try to get those line angles really really neat really really nice um, the length and then if I'm working on texture the area that I'm going to work you know three facial planes working on texture is this area here there's no point putting your you know sort of texture this is this is the area that you want to be you want to be working in here right I'm just aware of time so I'm going to spin you, spin you back around <laughs> no I and mean, that's that's perfect so I think the the other things people want to do is you know tips on tertiary anatomies and things you've sort of touched on that as well and the margins again you've gone over that um You've got, yeah, we've got eight minutes. Um, <laughs> so people you, want to know about sort of aftercares, chippings and things like that. What do you say to patients to the upkeep and maintenance? And... Okay. So, I mean, the first thing I think to say is if a patient is having composite bonding because they've got worn chipped teeth, me putting composite on their teeth isn't <laughs> going to help that. They're still going to get worn chipped teeth. They're going to chip my composite rather than rather than their teeth. And and, and the patient needs to 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 own that as well. So you know, you see so many cases of wear, and this you know, so they've lost volume. The, the 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 shape's funny on the tooth. And if you change nothing, if you don't change the occlusion, if you don't not going to have ortho, um, it's going to happen again. And it doesn't matter whether you give them a mouth guard or not. They'll do it during the day or whenever they're doing their sort of you know diurnal um grinding and it, and it will happen again so i say to them look you know my standard line is that you've managed to wear away the hardest substance in the human body the idea that i can stick something to your tooth and it's going to perform better is just not realistic so unless we change something unless we change the way that your teeth move across each other there's not much point in me doing this um, and then it's up to them um, so you know composite can chip so i mean what I'll say to patients at the end of their appointment, I'll say, you know, look, teeth can chip, composite can chip. Use your teeth for uh, eating, smiling, um, eat normal things. Don't use them as tools. Don't bite your nails. Don't hold pens. Don't hold keys. Um, if you put enough force on something, you will chip it, and you'll, you know, you're just in the way that you'll, you'll chip enamel as well. But I say, look, you know, composite can be repaired very easily, um, and you know, if it's in, within twelve months, I'll, you know, I'll just come in and I'll just fix that. That's, that's not a problem. Um, but if it's after that, then yeah, they'll need to, um, they'll need to pay. But um, it's it's rare. You don't you don't you don't see it very much. Um, again, it, it, it's it's about case selection. And if you're just sticking composite on because as I say they they've got worn teeth, then they're got, they're going to be chipping it, and you're going to be replacing it again and again and again. And they're not going to be very happy, and then you're not going to be happy because you're going to be doing it over and over. So it's about understanding often why the teeth are the shape that that they mm -hmm. are. And yeah, you know, sort of think we talked a bit earlier that you can, you know, you can 
try and give them canine guidance or you know perhaps you're going to open them up with dal or something but you need to do something you need to manage the reason why things are breaking and why things are breaking down mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um you mentioned earlier um chris or dawson academy and the things uh, any of the things like that you'd still recommend for people now obviously <laughs> dawson's quite different now you can do it over here yeah yeah save yourself some uh, although you don't get to go to clearwater beach so you know swings and roundabouts <laughs> in there. i mean it's, it's a, um for, for me as i say the chris Hill course was the uh, the turning point in my in my career and i'll forever be grateful for for that and uh, and what it gave me so the two things i always used to say to to young graduates was to um you know course wise do chris's course which i think i mean it sells out crazy i saw on social media the day he he they went on sale the whole course year at eight o'clock in the morning and they'd sold out by 8.02. Um, I mean, I know it's like sort of glass, Glastonbury levels of, uh, of, <laughs> of, of people sort of uh, getting their tickets. Um, but, but for me, that's such a great comprehensive course. And it's about, you know, it's about the teaching. Yeah, Chris is, Chris is phenomenal at what he does. Um, so you, you can't go wrong with that. Look, people will always feel... Um, very loyal to whatever course that, that they've done. But for me, that that was the one. And I think he's one of the best educators in the world. Um, so that was such a great, you know, it's, it's an aesthetic restorative course. So it's everything from um, occlusion to some ortho to you know, posterior stuff to photography. It's it's a great, it's a great all around. So if you can do that, do that. There's lots of other good ones as well, but I've not done them. So I couldn't speak personally of them. Uh, for me, I think if I had my time again, I think I'd probably, I mean, Dawson was great, but I think I'd go down the Coyce or the Spear route. Um, so John Coyce or Frank Spear. Um, I just think they're a bit, I don't know. I, I, I like a lot of the stuff that they do these days. And I've done a bit of Spear again in the States. Um, I've seen John Coyce speak a few times. Um, and they're really good sort of joined up, um, yeah, sort of joined up thinking. And the reason I ended up doing Dawson was because Again, it was a time that, that there was only Roy um, Higson doing courses here. So I had to go to the States and I was trying to sort of maximize my time then. I was looking at the timetable for the, the Dawson stuff compared to the Spear stuff. And it just happened that Dawson kind of, I could, I could go for two weeks and just kind of squeeze three kind of uh, three courses in. So, and by doing that lots of times, I could you know, reduce the number of times I could fly there. So, uh, so Dawson was great, but I, but yeah, um, Spear and Coyce, you can't go wrong with those guys. You know, if you want to just, think right i'm going to throw some money at some continuing education and i'm going to do it over the next few years send your money there it's it's you all you know it's a great investment and that's the way you should look at it it is a, it is a phenomenal investment in your in your career well uh kuna was saying we're waiting for the richard lee course so that's maybe yeah. they're going to hold off on that until that turns up <laughs> yeah maybe yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Watch, this, watch, watch this space yeah. oh there we go um, and then you sort of touched on there. If you had your time again, you know, but if you if you could sort of rewind, not necessarily about courses or education, but is there anything that you do now or you know now that you wish you knew five years out? Obviously, it sounds like you were finding yourself a little bit as well within the career. Yeah. But is there anything um, you wish you knew now that it would all work out and you wouldn't go diving? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Probably not to worry so much. Probably just um, to to throw myself into courses perhaps a little bit earlier. I mean, it's very different mm-hmm. back then, you know, in terms of, you know, you felt you had to sort of do your NHS apprenticeship for a few years and kind of, you know, just, just, just get stuck in. But um, I think from a, uh, from a practical point, you know, I'd say two things from a practical point of view and from a, a sort of more philosophical point of view, from a philosophical point of view, the way that you do it, just because somebody else does it differently, doesn't mean the way you do it is wrong. And I think we get so caught up sometimes seeing stuff, whether it's on Instagram or, or, a, um, even just going to a lecture and it's well they do it like that so that must be the way that you have to do it and it's not you know to so if something works for you that's okay they you know the tooth police aren't going to come calling and <laughs> say why did you do it like that um you know if it's working and it's and it's good then then that's okay um and then from from practical point of view i wish uh in terms of piece of equipment everyone talks about loops and cameras absolutely that's where you should spend your money but sandblaster I think I wish I'd had a sandblaster at the beginning of my career. You know, I sandblast everything, everything. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're, 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 you know, we're a DC dentistry the, these days. We, and we should be using sandblaster. If you don't have a sandblaster, buy a sandblaster because it's, it'll, it'll change your life. We got the Richard, Richard Lee branded sand, sandblaster. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It's going to have names <laughs> on the side of it. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Uh, but yeah, that, that probably those, I mean, there's, there's lots of things, but those, the, the, those two things, you know, just, it, it's a, your career is long. You know, I'm I'm sort of only 20, 
two years into it and, and I still feel there's so much that I don't know and there's people that I think are, are ahead of me or you, you've you just, you know, it's it's a cliche, but it's the race is long and it's, it's only with yourself and, you know, be happy, go on some really great courses, practice the best dentistry you can for yourself and your patients and that will go some way to making you happy. I think that's a perfect point to, uh, to end this on, my man. Thank you so much. That was epic. Thank you for having me. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. See you, See you later.